when I give instruction and counsel. You think I'm saying things out of the whim of my own breath? If God is going to bring me into the prophetic, but all you're doing is looking at Pastor David and looking at the leaders, oh, who are they? You're not going to receive the blessing. How are you going to be intimate with me? I don't want to waste my time. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. The call that God had on my life was to be an apostle. Hallelujah. Whether you like that word or not, I don't care because my life has testified of what I do. The fruit is right in front of your face. Hey there, guys. I hope everybody's doing well out there. My last two videos were about David Lynn and the channel that first tipped me off that something was wrong with David Lynn's preaching is the channel that I'm showing you here called Unfollowing David Lynn. Well, in talking to the people who run this channel over the last few weeks, it has come to my attention that David Lynn may very well be running a cult. Now, that may sound extreme to you, but I don't think it's an exaggeration at all. And as usual, I'm just going to present the facts here. You guys can tell me if this is a cult or not. Now, it's been hard for me to organize this video in my mind because there's a lot of information to cover here, and I'm probably going to have to break this up into at least two parts because I can't come even close to covering everything that's going on with David Lynn in one video at this point. Just right here on this page, David Lynn had a conversation about the Trinity with Marcus Rogers. David Lynn has endorsed child marriage. I mean, there's a lot here, guys. So let's start with the fact that David has planted about 30 churches and declared himself an apostle over them all. I'm on David's website here. This is Christ's Forgiveness Ministry, which is his ministry. And if you go to locations or churches, you will quickly see that David has churches set up in four different countries. And in the U.S. alone, he appears to have 19 of them. And just to be clear about this, church planning is a great thing so long as it is done biblically and the people doing it are qualified to do it. Just the same as street preaching and evangelism are great and necessary things as long as they are done right and done by people who are qualified to do them. In the last two videos, we saw David Lynn struggling over and over again with the idea of the divinity of Christ. And in one video that he's made recently, he's actually said that God can't come into his own creation. Where, no, well, you, can't, you can't have God enter into a dimension of creation unless he can. But if he's not creation, he can't. He exists. God is... He exists, but he's not in creation. Because at the moment he's in creation, that means he's created. Yes, he's independent. Right. So if he's in creation, that means he's created. If there's any picture of God's attributes... It looked like Jesus. If God were to ever enter into creation, ever, if he could, but since he can't, let's just say he can't, but if he could, if you looked at all the prophets, all the messages, well, why, can't why can't he? Because he's not creation. You don't worship Jesus. I worship God, the one true living God through Jesus. No, I'm not Muslim because Christianity came before Islam. Well, how does that make him more right? If you don't worship Jesus, then you're Muslim. Congratulations, brother. So while David may tell Christians that he believes that Jesus is God, clearly he does not believe that all of the time. Because if God couldn't enter into creation, then it's not possible for Jesus to have been God in the flesh. And again, watch my last two videos for more about that. I don't want to get completely sidetracked here. I've already done two videos on this one subject. And I bring it up here to say that David is not qualified to be planting churches and calling himself an apostle. David is not even qualified to be pastoring one church. And unfortunately, that is not the only problem here. That is just the tip of the iceberg. So David has also been setting up leaders in these churches as quickly as he can, filling these churches with people who are either leaving their current churches to come or are very new Christians, young in the faith, let's say. And apparently, Apparently, many of these leaders that David is setting up over these churches are not qualified either. Big surprise, since he is not qualified himself. He also is berating to his congregation. So here he's actually angry that they're not clapping enough. And check out how David handles that during worship. Somebody needs to clap that devil off of you. If you send somebody beside you got a devil, you just give them a high five, help them clap, turn to your neighbor, they clap their hands, say I'm here to help you. A few moments later. Give your neighbor another high five, I don't think they got that clap down pat yet. Especially the ones that are sitting there silent and don't know what to do. 
We're here to teach you to clap your hands. A few minutes later. Clap your hands, all ye people. Twelve seconds later. I came to praise. Clap your hands. One eternity later. No wonder our praise life is sometimes pathetic. No wonder we don't know what to do when we come to church. We don't know how to clap our hands. We have no rhythm. So yes, David was dancing and singing on stage and he was so offended by the fact that the people weren't dancing and clapping that after telling them to clap, he started blaming devils for the lack of clapping. He told them to clap a few more times, told them he was here to teach them to clap, then sang a song about clapping and told them to clap a few more times. And then he brought it back up in the sermon, said they can't clap and have no rhythm. Now this might seem like a petty example, but if you watch David's sermons, there's a lot of this. There's a lot of David getting personally offended when people aren't jumping and shouting and yelling hallelujah. And this will show you David's overall attitude and how he feels that this church, when he's there, should be the David Lynn show. You know, listen, I'm here to tell you today that when, when we're in the spirit, we are in the dance. Amen. We should learn to dance where in the bible does it say being in the spirit is being in the dance aren't these christians in your church don't they also have the spirit if the spirit is not moving them to dance during praise why would they do it well after watching hours of david lynn i can tell you the answer to that they have to do it because they're in the david lynn show he's in charge of that show and he's going to dictate exactly how it goes down and everybody else is expected to jump through those hoops this is spiritual abuse, and there are many examples of it just in this one sermon. Here's David Lynn talking about his favorite topic, David Lynn. And that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. How shameful it is for people behind the back of Pastor David when I give instruction and counsel. You think I'm saying things out of the whim of my own breath when I declare certain things? Do you have any respect for the house of the Lord or the authority given unto me? And if you don't, you need to find somewhere that, that you're, you're in tune with. Because if you're not in tune with me, all you're doing is creating problems for me. Me, 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 my authority, my prophetic gifts, you're in my way unless you're obeying me 100% and respecting me all of the time to the max. That's David Lynn's philosophy on how to pastor a church. And did you see how David twisted scripture there? He read 1 Corinthians 1.10, where Paul is telling the church of Corinth not to have divisions, but then Paul goes on to explain that they have meaningless divisions. They were creating factions within themselves for no reason. And in fact, the Corinthians misunderstood the fact that Paul, Apollos, Peter, and Jesus were all teaching the same thing. They were going around saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas. And Paul goes on to ask, has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So clearly Paul is saying, we're all preaching Christ here. There was no difference between the message of Paul, the message of Peter, or the message of Apollos. They were all preaching Christ. But while Paul was saying this to point back to Christ, David uses it as an opportunity to point to himself and his own authority. And this is a disturbing pattern that continues throughout all of the preaching that I've seen from David when he's preaching in his own churches so far. And using scripture as a means to maintain power and control is definitely cult-like behavior. Amen. You need to be in tune because what God is trying to do requires a, si a singleness of mind. It requires a unity of spirit. And if God is going to bring me into the prophetic, but all you're doing is looking at Pastor David and looking at the leaders, oh, who are they? You're not going to receive the blessing. You're not going to walk in the same place. How would people not being in tune with you stop God from bringing you into the prophetic? That doesn't make any sense at all. And this is what these modern day prophets and apostles do. If you're going to claim to be a prophet or to be prophetic, that is a gift of the Spirit. It's a gift that God can give freely to whomever he chooses in order to work his purposes, not your own. So when these modern day NAR prophets say, oh, you're interrupting my prophetic gift, they're basically saying that man is stopping God from being able to do his own will. Ah, yikes. 
In fact, a lot of people have already left because they weren't of us. The Bible says they left to show that they were not of us because if they were of us, if they were intimate with us, if they were of the same mind, the same spirit, they would have stayed. But they left to show and expose that they were not fully of us. This is such an obvious misuse of scripture for David's own purposes. I mean, this is manipulative. It's controlling. It's creepy frankly speaking. So 1 John 2.19 does indeed say, they went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us, but they went out so that it would be shown that they all are not of us. But the Apostle John wasn't talking about David's churches. The Apostle John was talking about the faith. These are people who left the faith. And if we read this in context, John was talking about people who denied that Jesus was the Christ. He says, who is a liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is Antichrist. And even before verse 19, we see John talking about the same idea of there being many Antichrists in the world. So John is literally talking about people going out from the early Christian church and straight up denying that Jesus is the Christ. And David Lynn has turned this into a verse about people leaving his churches that he set up. That is why context is so important when you're trying to understand scripture. But I think even without the context, people should know that this is not about David's church. Anyone who's ever read 1 John would have an idea that David is clearly twisting this text to support his own purposes. Sometimes I feel like that shepherd that's, that's trying to pull that sheep and the sheep always wants to go the other way. God feels like that with some of you. Some of you are like that stubborn donkey with a neck. It's like you built muscles that no man can break. Don't be like that person that gets so stubborn in the neck that, that you can't drink. You have too much theology in you. I okay, I feel like you have too much theology in you. He's saying people won't listen to him because they know theology. That's not a good thing. So Paul, in Acts chapter 17, said that the Bereans were more noble because they received what he was saying and they tested it by the scriptures. But David clearly doesn't want you bringing that to him. He doesn't want you to take what he's saying and examine it against scripture. And that is a big red flag. Anytime a person doesn't want you to have theology, you should run in the other direction because that person is a false teacher. Like, why don't they want you to study scripture and to learn about God for yourself? That's where theology comes from. I, I feel that some Baptists, not all, I, I say Baptists a lot as a password, but I feel, I feel that some Baptists have developed uh, bodybuilder muscles around their neck power lifter muscles around their neck and no matter what the Pentecostal preacher says about getting filled with the Holy Ghost he just can't drink he doesn't want it he, he can't receive it I would say in some way they become reprobate to the Spirit of the Lord that is a serious accusation he's saying that Baptists for whatever reason he's singling out Baptists I don't really understand that but he said that they're reprobate to the Spirit of God or that it seems like they are that would mean that they can't even be saved. So in other words, if you won't come to David and let him do his Pentecostal thing to you, then he's saying you're a reprobate. You can't be saved by grace through faith anymore. Guys, this is terrible false teaching. This is the kind of false teaching that really hurts people. And I don't just mean emotionally, I mean spiritually. This is the kind of thing that drives people away from the faith altogether. If you want to be intimate, you need to be humble. Some of you want to be close to pastor, but you're so cantankerous. I, I can't even teach you anything. You already know everything. So what? how are you going to be intimate with me? I don't want to waste my time. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. So if, I don't, if, if you don't want my preaching, I will preach to somebody that wants it. And if you don't want God, God will, will show himself to somebody else that wants him. How are those two things even remotely similar? How is the acceptance of the things that you're saying and teaching similar to people recognizing God? I mean, the amount of pride that just oozes off of David Lynn as he's preaching. He doesn't want to waste his time. Those are his words. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were a pastor. I thought you were a servant of the church. This is not a waste of your time if you're truly fulfilling your office. I mean, you're working in a ministry for God, leading the people of God, supposedly being a shepherd, right? Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. 
But David Lynn doesn't want to waste his time with people who are cantankerous. You know what? I'm just going to play this part again, and then I'm going to move on to the next point, because I don't have to say anymore. I can just let David Lynn say it. It's so obvious that he's operating completely in his flesh here. But you're so cantankerous. I, I can't even teach you anything. You already know everything. So what? how are you going to be intimate with me? I don't want to waste my time. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. So I don't. if, if you don't want my preaching, I will preach to somebody that wants it. And if you don't want God, God will, will show himself to somebody else that wants him. Just insane. Totally crazy to me. I can't imagine people actually sitting in this church and staying. It's amazing to me that all of the seats in this church aren't empty. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen to me. A lot, a lot of the things I already said you've been disqualified and so that means that you can't be blaming God or blaming this church for why you have not experienced the glory and power of God. Right, so you can't blame David for why you haven't experienced the glory of God. If he's laid hands on you, done his Pentecostal stuff, and you didn't fall out in the spirit and have a spiritual experience, you can't blame David for that. If you came sick and he healed you, but you left sick still, you can't blame him for that. Oh, if he prophesied something and it didn't come true, or let's just say he appointed leaders in a church and they were abusive to people, which is certainly an allegation that's out there, but we'll say it hypothetically for now, you can't can't blame David for that because you're not as perfect as David is. That's like a pillar of David's preaching right there. Here's David in the same sermon telling you how much better he is than everyone else in his church. When you suffer, what do you do when you suffer? The first thing I bring is my prayer to the Lord. When, when somebody slanders you, the first thing I do is, is praise the mighty name of the Lord. When I come to the church, the first thing I come with is an offering. When I, when, when, when I go to work, the first thing I do is bless the place in the name of Jesus Christ. When I walk on the street, the first First thing I do is seek his righteousness when I when I when I get into my car the the first thing I do is pray when, when I'm about to eat my food the first thing I do is seek his face God bless this food nourish and strengthen me purify the hands that made it okay so he only seeks God first all of the time he always does the right thing because he's a super spiritual apostle unlike all of you people who fall short of God's glory what absolute pride and arrogance the last I checked there were none righteous no not one and all had fallen short of the glory of God and that's why we need a savior that's why we need Jesus Christ because his sacrifice on the cross makes propitiation for our sin and anytime you hear a person talking about how great and perfect they are that person either doesn't understand the perfection of God and the severity of sin or they are a manipulative liar Oh, and here's David talking about the fact that he's an apostle. I have a different call. The call that God had on my life was to be an apostle. Hallelujah. Whether you like that word or not, I don't care because my life has testified of what I do. The fruit is right in front of your face. And if you can't see, you're blind. I don't really care what you got to say. Apostolic anointing is still here today. Baptists call it missionary. We call it apostle. There's no word missionary in the Bible, but there is the word apostle. And apostle means sent. Somebody needs to go. And that was me. And so, uh, you know, I don't use it that much because of you, sparing you because of your lack of faith. So much is said in each of these clips. I mean, guys, we could be here all day and I have so much to get through that I really can't say that much about each one. But Apostle David Lynn, where do I begin with this? I mean, I guess we have to start with the fact that he said apostle means sent one or one who sent an emissary of another. That is true. But in the context of the Christian church, we're not just talking about any emissary who any old person sends anywhere. We're talking about people who are commissioned by Jesus Christ himself. 
and sent out by Jesus Christ himself. That's why the apostles are apostles of Jesus Christ. Now, when the 11 remaining apostles replaced Judas with Matthias in Acts chapter 1, they were picking a person who had been with them the whole time throughout the ministry of Jesus and was a witness to his resurrection. They're very specific about that. Now, we know Paul was an apostle who was not with Jesus during his ministry, but Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus and informed him that he was a chosen vessel to bear the name of Jesus by taking the gospel to the Gentiles and to kings and to the sons of Israel. So in other words, he was made a full-on apostle by Jesus himself. He was sent to preach to the people who Jesus said he would go preach to. On top of this, in 2 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12, Paul says, "...the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance." So what are the signs of an apostle? Well, Paul goes on, "...by signs and wonders and miracles." So, is David Lynn working signs and wonders and miracles? Well, David Lynn might think that he is, because David Lynn is that self-deluded and self-important that he may really believe he's out here working miracles. But I think it's much more likely that David Lynn knows he's not an apostle. He's not an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe his wife sent him out to get some milk or something. But Jesus did not personally commission this man to be an apostle and to work the signs of an apostle as proof of it. I think that's pretty clear and obvious. Now, on top of that, this is why the whole thing feels so culty to me. I know that there are different definitions of what a cult is. And I'm not saying that David Lynn is David Koresh. But to start this organization, a quote-unquote ministry, and to make it all about you, and then planting this many churches, 30, and barely spending any time at the majority of them, and declaring yourself an apostle over all of this while clearly being a false teacher, I mean, that's very, very cult-like. And David enforces what I would call a fringe view of secondary doctrines, such as making all of the women in his churches wear head coverings, while he doesn't even have the very basics of the faith down, like the fact that Jesus is God incarnate. Oh, and in fact, at one point in this sermon, he actually said that Jesus was God. But it's clear from watching him preach to Muslims that he tells them something completely different. And the way that David is twisting scripture to gain authority over others and to manipulate and control them, that is cult leader behavior 101. And it's the combination of all of these things together that is very concerning. So yeah, like I said, there's a lot here. It's going to take me at least one more video to explain the rest of what's going on here. I just had to start somewhere and get this information out there. You guys let me know what you think. Is it a cult? Is it probably a cult? I think that would be a safe thing to say about it. And guys, it's crazy, but we have to keep in mind that real people are caught up in this and being harmed by it. I mean, you've got 30 churches worth of people who are essentially putting themselves directly under the authority of David Lynn. And that's not even to mention the fact that he has half a million YouTube subscribers. I mean, that's usually the part of this that distresses me, is when the false teacher has just this massive following of people online who are believing them. But in this case, it's way worse because you have people who are churched up underneath of this man. And he's telling them that they have to agree with him on everything. They have to be of one mind with him. He's totally twisting that as well. That's in multiple verses, by the way, such as Philippians 2, 2, where Paul tells the Philippians to make his joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. But guys, who did the Philippians get the gospel from? Who did the Philippians learn their doctrines from? The apostle Paul himself. Okay, that's the difference. They learned under a true apostle of Jesus Christ, who had received the direct revelation from Jesus, had received his gospel directly from Jesus, and then still went to meet with the other apostles. He didn't stay apart from them. So as opposed to David Lynn, who's a false apostle, these are people who had learned directly from a person who had learned directly from Jesus himself. So for David to take that verse and to tell everyone that they need to be of one mind with him and his teachings is again elevating himself up to the level of Apostle Paul. 
Guys, I have to stop it here because I'm going to go on and on if I don't. A big thank you to the people who are running the channel, Unfollow David Lynn. Again, these are people who were involved in David Lynn's churches, and they're trying to warn other people and to get this word out. So keep that in mind. They're doing great work. I really appreciate them. And they're also running a Facebook support group. So if you come out of David Lynn's churches and you're looking for people to talk about this with who have been through the same experience as you, that is out there as well. Thank you guys so much for stopping back to the channel. If you can drop a like on the video, maybe leave a comment. That helps to get these videos out to more people. Subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to see more content, of course. Lord willing, I will be back very soon. Thank you all again. God bless you all. Grace and peace in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ.